All right, welcome back to another class. Last time we were able to discuss the introduction to oral literature, saying some things about oral literature and knowing full well that oral literature really exists. By pointing out the prose, the drama and the poetry in oral literature. But today we want to be discussing a particular work of art in oral literature, which is part of the poetry. I'll bring out a poem from any of these Nigerian local languages, interpret it in English language, and we are going to explicate that poem together in this class. But if this is the first time of you visiting this channel, please, I will want you to subscribe to this channel like this video and comment on this video and God will bless you. All right, let's get started. I have a poem with me from Isoko language. Isoko language is in Delta States, Nigeria. Isoko language Delta States, Nigeria. So I have the poem which is Eninometana Ote Dowe Ote Dowe Rehuzofikota, just as you can see on the screen. Emenometana, Ote Dowe, Ote Dowe, Rehuzofikota. It actually means the words of my mouth, the things I have said, the things that I have been saying. If they are so painful, that is called I now. If they are so painful, repeating itself again in line three. If they are so painful to you, use your head to hit the tide road. You know, the tide road is always made with um, uh, asphalt and concrete. Yes, but we are in the Soko language, they normally call it um, kota. Uh, so that the things that I've said, if they are so painful to you, and you cannot bear them, you cannot bear them. You, you, you don't even know what to do, you are not unconscious. The best thing for you to do is to go and use your head and hit the words, the tide road. Let us start this poem as a satiric poem. Maybe a poet has been writing, correcting the evils in the society, exposing the evil society, and trying to correct the evils in the society. Whereas the people he is correcting have decided to make sure that they, they look for a way to bring down the voice of the poet, or look for any means to stop the poet because they already was angry. Why must this man, this woman say this about me continuously every time? So the poet can just say, if the words that I'm saying are so bitter because they are, they, 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 they are there to make you better, then the best thing for, for you to do is to use your head and hit the tide road and die. Because since you don't want to take correction, the best thing for you to do is to go and die. So let us just take, that is what the, the poem is, is talking about. I've just brought out the analysis of the poem in this, in this um, particular uh, language. To so see that oral literature really exists and try to explicate a poem in oral literature. Emenometana ote duwe. It was composed in the time of old by our four forefathers and mothers. Let's first talk about the structure of this poem. The structure of this poem, it has uh, one stanza with a quatrain. One stanza with a quatrain. When we say quatrain now, it means four lines. That is, is a poem of one stanza having four lines inside of it. And check properly for you to see the beauty in this their poem. You will find out that there is the first line has about the first and the last line has about six syllables each. Six syllables. 
Check the last line also, line four. It has six labels as well. Re, hu, zo, fi, ko, ta. Check the second and the third line. O, te, do, we. First um, syllables. Check the third line as well. First syllables. See the beauty in this point. So the first and the last line have um, six syllables and the second and third having four syllables rest, uh, each. We are not yet done with the structure. Let us still look at the point. Um, you will find out that it has a rhyme scheme of A, B, D, A. A menometer na. Ote do we. Ote do we. Rose gota. So it has the A, E, E, A. So they have the rhyme scheme of A, B, B, A. I, I, I don't know if you can check it out in this particular point. Finding, I'm looking, uh, having this kind of words, rhyme scheme. What about the, the type of poem? Can we say this poem is an ode? No, it is not an ode. Can we say it is romantic? No, it is not romantic. So, checking very well, it is used to correct the evils in the society. People that have been doing wrong and this poem tends to correct them. Yes, they don't to be corrected. They want to then go and die. So we can say this poem is satiric in nature. This is a satiric poem used to correct the evils in the society. Those that are ready to be corrected, let them be corrected. If you don't want to be corrected because my words that are bitter, that are used to make you better, you want to die, then go and die. So that is all for the structure. I said it has, it can be called a satiric poem. Has the rhyme scheme of A, B, B, A. And the first and last stanza, first and last line having um, six syllables each, and the third and fourth line having four syllables each. All right, let us continue. I don't know if you can see any assonance in that poem. Look at line one. Assonance. E menometa, e menometana. The e e sound here. E menometana. Can you see it, dear? What about line two? The same air sound. Check it. O te do we. O te do we. You just saw it in line three as well. So, assonance is in line one, line two, and line three. And it is very, very what? Evident here. All right, let us continue. What about repetition? Repetition can also be found in this poem. Line one, line two, and line three are repeated. The whole of line two was repeated in line three. Or tell do way. Or tell do way. So repetition can also be found in this beautiful poem of the Africans. Let us also look at the themes. You know, we are supposed to be dealing with themes as well. What are the themes in this poem? We have the theme of repentance. Repent. The poet has been trying to say, repent and repent of your evils, whereas those that he has been communicating to have deemed it fit not to repent. And their own has been, if you cannot do what you want, then we kill. Then they go and die. So it's the, the words of the poet are used to what? To make the people repent of their evils and turn to, the, to, to, to good ways. So we have the theme of repentance. We also have the theme of power in the words of a poet. No wonder the Bible said the words of God are, are, are sharper like that than two edged swords. That is the same thing as the words of poets. The poets' words, when it comes to satiric poems, they are so bitter. Used to make the, the society better. So the words of a poet are so powerful to the extent that when it pierces the mind of anyone, the hearts of anyone, they, they, they will surely repent. I no one has ever told me this. Who gave you the audacity to tell me this? Anyway, I am maxed by my words. You cannot hold me by my words as a poet. I have said this, I have said it. 
You cannot hold me because whatever thing I have said, that is how it is. But I used a beautiful, uh, I used beautiful words, ornamented words, aesthetic words, colorful words, flowering words, you dignify words to bring out what is in my mind, knowing full well that it can even get you angry. But there is no way can point, point to, to me that I really say. So the words of the poets are so powerful that they can even make the society better. And we can also bring out the theme of I don't care attitude of poets. I have said what is in my mind. If you like, go and die. The society is not good. You have been stealing our money. You, you have been, you are, you, the society has been corrupt. Robbery, um, malpractice of every kind so i am i'm pouring out my heart now if you like go and die if you like don't die i have said what is in my mind do whatever thing you want to do i don't care if the words i have said are so painful to you if they are so painful to you go and use your head to hit the tide road and die but what is in my mind is that i have corrected you so these are some of the things we can find out in this poem. And at the same time, there was even another poem that we also worked on in, uh, in the classroom one time like that, which is a poem from the Igbo language. Though it is a burial song. Um, that one also can also be, be uh, explicated, but we're not going to do that for now. Maybe in the subsequent videos, we'll be dealing with one, one uh, of the prosaic works, maybe a legend, a myth, or any folk tale, and maybe one of the African um, drama, which can be festival, uh, marriage ceremonies, or any of them. But I hope this class is well understood. Knowing full well now that African poems can be, can be explicated, that is to say, it, is, it forms part of what? Poetry. And if at all you have any question, drop your question in the comment box. It will be attended to. And if you love this video, and like I've said before now, please subscribe. I will be posting many videos of this nature. And also click on the notification button so that you can be receiving notification whenever I drop videos. Also like this video, subscribe and comment. And God bless you. Bye-bye.